Today's module is entitled, The Odds Are Against You, but you can win if you know what you are up against. So let's get started here. The competition is fierce, but for you to succeed, you have to know what you are up against. Because as Mark Cuban says, if you don't know more than your competition, they're going to kick your ass. So we're going to look at the data and how by having more knowledge than the competition, this will give you better insight to make better choices that will give you a better odds of success. Now, we know many of you come from different industries as well as different backgrounds. However, in this example, we're going to look at the example of running a small business. Um, we're going to look at some online strategies and some offline strategies, but particularly those in the offline brick and mortar world. So no matter what field that you're in, we're going to take some of these principles that we're going to talk about and apply them into your own industry, even if you were, even if you do not run a small business. Now, in business, some of you may be familiar with the 80-20 principle, in which 80% of your efforts make up 20% of your results because the big money goes to the innovators. Now, the opposite is also true where you get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. You just got to know which, uh, which side of physics that you're working from. Now, part of my job when I worked as a consultant working with multi-billion dollar companies, part of my job was to help them to understand the numbers of their business, to outspart the marketplace as well as their competitors, because once you understand the numbers, then you can pick the right strategies. You see, so many businesses are ignorant when it comes down to the numbers. This is why you have people who promote a certain tactic like a new social media channel. However, unless you understand the numbers or let's say the economics, the tactics are useless. So how much does a small business owner make? Now there's a big range depending on a number of different factors. And we're gonna address some of those factors, but um, on the low end, they're making about $30,000. On the high end, about $182,000. But on average, a small and medium-sized business owner is roughly bringing in about $73,000 a year as their take-home pay. Um, if they're incorporated, that means that the average, or let's say the median income is about $49,804. If they are unincorporated, that's $22,424. So let's look at this a little bit more in depthly. This is research that was done in 2017, according to Payscale. But even though that it's a couple of years old by now, um, these numbers are roughly still uh, about the same, okay? So according to Payscale's 2017 data, uh, the average small business owner's income, so that's her take-home pay, is about $73,000 a year, according to the Small Business Administration. The medium income of a self-employed individual as incorporated business is $49,804 and $22,424 for unincorporated firms. And the reason for that is a business owner that has taken the time and the money and the effort to incorporate their business takes their business more seriously. So they're going to make more money and those incorporated, uh, they're not taking their business as, as seriously. And so that's why the, the difference here. So looking at nationwide averages can be misleading since each state and city has different costs of living. For clarification, the SBA also breaks down, which is the SBA is the Small Business Administration, also breaks down the average income of business owners by state. For example, their data shows that California small business owners incorporated earn an average of $56,142, while uh, Vermont small business owners incorporated earn $45,828. For the full list of small business profiles by state, check out the Small Business Administration's website. So these are the annual sales revenue for full-time U.S. business owners. And as you can see, it breaks down to a lot of different categories here, but we're going to look at this and break this down. And, uh, and it's not a, necessarily about how much a business owner makes, but 
why is a person who makes it, what is the difference? What are, let's say the, the top 5%, somebody, or let's actually look at the, yeah, it's the top 4%, uh, 500,000 to a million dollars a year. What is that business owner doing that all the other business owners, the, the, the 96% are not doing? And, and what is he doing that enabled him to make 500,000 to a million dollars a year in annual revenue. Okay, so we're gonna look at this as we continue on here. So according to businessknowhow.com, small business economic survey shows that 25% of small businesses earn less than $25,000 a year. 51,000 or 51% earn less than $100,000 a year. And just the top 10% earn $100,000 or more. Now, according to an article from Inc.com, uh, and you can find the full link in that in, inside the workbook, who says that the average small business owner works at least 50 hours a week and 25% of them work more than 60 hours and 70% work weekends. Means that the average small business owner is making between $23.39 and to $28 an hour. So, are you, how many hours are you working? If you are working those hours, why are you working at it? We're gonna show you some things that will help you to become more efficient. We're gonna look at the practices that big multi-billion dollar companies use and how they become efficient. And so you can use that to either make more money or do a little combination of both, which is to make more money and then spend more time doing what you feel is important. Now, according to a study by the U.S. Small Business Administration in 2015, small businesses employed uh, 58.9 million people, uh, or 47.5 percent of priv of the private workforce. For clarification purposes, small businesses is defined as a company with a hundred or fewer employees. From a different SBA survey, which again, the SBA is the Small Business Administration. So 80% of the 28.1 small businesses in the United States do not have employees. The average small business revenue with no employees is $44,000 a year. Now that's revenue, that is not take home pay. And the average range of small businesses with employees is $4.9 million in 2021 from the article titled, now this is a long title, so it's SME Operating Performance on the Government of Canada's website. Margins for a small business operating between 2004 and 2012 were 7% you will notice a big variant from the chart in the small business nonprofit margin ranging from a low of 1.5 to as high as, as 7%. The information obviously varies from year to year based on economic conditions, but 7% net operating margin is a high watermark. Given that 80% of small businesses do not have any employees, the average business owner has $44,000 in revenue, and it looks like the average one-person business makes slightly over $3,000 a year. Even if you double that to 7%, we're still only looking at $6,000 a year in profits, which isn't exactly a banner number. That is not the average small business profit since that only addresses one person companies. Now, just as a side note, um, I belong to one of Grant Cardone's uh, business mentoring groups. And there's a lady that has a bakery and she has a profit of 14. She claims to have a profit of 14 percent. I totally uh, agree with what she's doing. So there are other businesses that do have higher profit margins than 7%. Like it said, there's a lot of variables on this. So you wanna look at this for what your industry is, okay? Now, if you take the weighted average of all businesses in each size category, you're looking at slightly over $50,000 a year you will notice that the profit level only really becomes somewhat significant when a business has between 20 to 99 employees, at which point the average profit margin is $498,680. 
Growing a small business to north of 20 employees requires a very different entrepreneur skill set than a the startup skill set, which is why so many so few businesses ever surpass the one million dollar watermark. Even at a million dollars in revenue, the profits on average are only seventy thousand dollars a year, which is barely above the average employee's salary. According to the book Scaling Up by Vern Harnish, 94% of businesses have less than a million dollars in revenue. Using the above information and extracting data from other studies done by both the U.S. Small Business Administration and the Government of Canada, here is the percent of businesses that fall into each category. Okay, so as, as you see here, uh, you have one employee, your average revenue is $44,000 a year, but you're only making a profit of about $3,080. When you have between two to four employees, uh, you're doing an average of $387,000, but you're only making a profit, a net profit of $27,090. Between five to nine employees, you're doing a million eighty dollars, and uh, the net profit is seventy five thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, Ten to nineteen employees, you're bringing in two million one hundred and sixty four thousand dollars, and you have a profit of one uh, hundred and fifty one thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. So that's the the minimum requirement to start bringing in some significant income. And then between twenty to ninety nine employees, you're now up at 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 to, at seven million one hundred twenty four thousand dollars. But the net profit is about four hundred ninety eight thousand six hundred and eighty dollars. And then anywhere between 100 to 99 employees, you're now at 40 million seven hundred seventy five thousand. But the net profit is two million eight hundred fifty four thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. So this is why you want to have we're going to talk about some of these principles that multi billion dollar companies have again in order so you can have a more profitable business. Now, to summarize and answer the question, what? type of profit does the average small business owner make or how much does a small business owner make broken down into the categories you're looking at so um, I go through this again um, in the book but we've already covered it as a single self-employed business owner on average you're making about th uh, three thousand eight hundred dollars so uh, actually three thousand eighty dollars I miswrote that um, and then between a hundred to 499 employees, then you're doing $2,854,250 profit per, per year. But there's a strategy that we're gonna look at and how to do that exact same thing without any employees. Let's now look at million dollar income earners. Most of today's millionaires weren't born into wealth. Research shows a study by Fidelity Investments found that 88% of millionaires are self-made. Overall, the research revealed that the current millionaires are on average 61 years old with $3.05 million in assets. However, as we continue throughout this article, we will look at the numbers of what high income small business owners are doing as you will see, there are those who are working way harder than they need to for a lot less money. Now, an in-depth study on productivity was done by uh, Vilfredo Pareto and DeSolo Price that studied the inequalities of wealth, which found that in any creative endeavor, only a small percentage make up the majority of the results, which holds true in every area of your life, including in business. Um, we're, we're, we do go through this in this program. Well, we, we study this much more in depthly in our real estate version of this program. So how to build a real estate empire. You might want to go ahead and check that out and you'll see in much more details how this actually plays out um, in real time. So the key is knowing which activities bring you 80% of the results so you can avoid 80% of your efforts for 20% of the results, right? So the key to remaining, the key is to remain in the game 
long enough in order for you to be successful because it is found that the longer you pursue a certain goal, your odds of success increase. Mark Garnell, who is the contributing author of Success Magazine, found that those who continued in the pursuit of a career goal for 10 years, 90% of them were earning a six-figure income or more. So when we say to remain in the game long enough to be successful, you need to remain in your industry, be continuously building your business long enough for the economics to start working out in your favor. Now, Price's Law, which was researched by DeSolo Price, so that's why they call it Pro Price's Law. It's based upon his name. Um, it's just a coincidence that his name has the word price in it. So um, now this is a square root law where only a small percentage of pe uh, people produce half of the results. For example, if we're looking at small businesses, but don't be distracted by the industry we're looking at because the principles crosses over into any industry, including re re real estate, YouTube videos, or anything else that you can think of, which is a square root law like we showed you which shows a very small percentage do half the results. So if you have a thousand, let's say if you are in the real estate industry, so you have a, a thousand agents, right? And so a, uh, out of that thousand agents, only a hundred of them are producing half of the results. So you got 900 other agents that aren't really pulling their fair share, in other words, okay? And, uh, but there, the, those 100 are bringing you half of the, of the sales that are done. Um, w there's an, well, there's so many issues that we can talk about. I can go off on a rant on this, but let's, let's continue here. So running a small business is not unlike any other industry, even though industry critics claim that it has a high failure rate. Let's look at real estate again. Tom Ferry, who studied the, who is the world's top trainer for real estate agents, reported on his blog, uh, TomFerry.com, that 80%, 87% of real estate agents fail and never even make a sale. So in the real estate version of this article, uh, again, the odds are against you, you will see that the average $100,000 income earner in real estate is between 51 to 60 years old and has been in the business between 11 to 20 years. The same holds true for small business owners. According to the small business owners, how much would you pay yourself? And this is an article from CNBC, which shows that many company founders take no salary in their first years of running a business. Cardone Ventures shows that there are 31 and a half small businesses, 25 million are self-employed businesses, 5.2 million of these businesses have between two to 15 employees and 630,000 businesses with 15 or more employees. And every year, despite the economy, two thirds of businesses close their doors every five years. And the top three reasons that they give is not enough demand for their product or services, can't find good help, and number three, can't get funding. However, uh, Shark Tank's Robert Hershevik spoke at an Inc. 5000 event entitled How Robert Hershevik Escaped Poverty, where he explains that many smaller companies struggle to get ahead because they believe having a good product is enough for them to be successful. On the other hand, the more successful companies tend to be more sales focused and certain industries like insurance, real estate, and financial services are more likely to develop their sales skills. And uh, we have the video for that inside the workbook. 